demo module, I want to show you how to make Windows 10 your own. Mm, so my Windows 10. It'll be your Windows 10. Okay. So uh, we're going to look at how to personalize it. All right. For starters, you notice we have this default Windows 10 background on yeah, the screen. Yeah, wind tunnel with the, with the windows. And, yeah. and, and Microsoft actually spent a lot of effort making that picture. But still, I would rather have maybe a picture <laughs> of my daughter on there or my dog or something. So we can personalize that. Now, in other versions of Windows, you could right-click on the background and choose Personalize, and that's still there. We can also get to it if we go into Settings mm -hmm. and Personalization. We'll wind up in the exact same place. So here we see a preview of what Windows 10 looks like. We can choose what we want in our background. So here we're choosing to see a picture. I could just choose a solid color. Mm -hmm. I could choose a slideshow, and it'll play through my pictures that are, st that are saved on the computer in a random fashion. I'll stick with picture, and you can see I've got a few default pictures here. So I could choose this one, for example, a little underwater theme. Or I could browse and find my own pictures. So if I go to my OneDrive, for example, and my pictures, maybe I want this piano and ukulele to be my background. Hmm. So minimize that. That looks pretty good. Yeah. If I scroll down a little bit, I get an option in how the picture is going to be applied. Fill makes it fill the entire screen. That means part of the picture may be cut off, though. If I choose Fit, I get the whole picture, but that's not really what I want in the background mm -hmm. in this case. So I'm going to change that. I can also choose things like Stretch, Tile, Center, and Span. Those give you different effects with the pictures, so you can try those and see what works best for you. But I'm going to stick with Fill. If I go to Colors, I can choose the accent color that goes along with it, and it gives you a little sample here. It's the color that'll be in the top left menu of some programs. It's the background color you'll see of the tiles in the start menu. So right now it's this default blue color. If I click over in the start menu, you can see that blue color here. If I want to change that, I could choose to have Windows 10 pick the color for me. If I turn this on, it picks a color based on the colors that it sees in my photograph. Oh, okay. So, so it picked kind of a rustic orange. Yeah. To from the from the guitar and that's not ukulele. bad yeah that's not bad so if I click on start oops now you'll see that a lot of the tiles not all of them but a lot of them have changed to pick up the default color you see the same thing over here in the start menu list I'm gonna leave that now I can choose to also show the color in the start task and action center you can see that colors the bar a little bit in that shade for me the bar is still transparent but uh, as you can see the string of the ukulele kind of going through the back back there it gives it a nice 3d effect I can choose to turn that transparency off by just turning that off and now it's a solid color but I like the transparency if you're visually impaired or if you know somebody who is they can go into these high contrast settings these are under the ease of access setting, and it makes the, the screen easier to see for people who have you know difficulty seeing. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back from that, go back into personalization. Another area we can personalize is the lock screen. So when the computer is locked, either when we first turn it on or if we have it set to lock after we wait a few minutes, we have this picture. And again, I can choose a different picture. I can choose to have a slideshow of various pictures. I can also choose apps to display on the screen. So the actual app itself won't display, but for example, maybe on the lock screen I want to see if I have any unread email messages. Maybe I want to see if I have uh, appointments coming up. So I can add those here and you can see that we've got mail and we have calendar already set to show quick status. In theory I could choose another one, like if I wanted to see the weather, I would add that here. And now when the computer goes to a lock screen, I'll see my mail messages, calendar entries, and the weather for the day. There's also a screensaver, and I can control those settings from here. Now, notice that when I clicked that link, it kind of left settings. And this happens in a couple of places. Most of the settings that you use day-to-day -day now are in this settings app. But occasionally there's a setting that's still somewhere else in Windows. So that's what's happened here is it's taken me back out to the screensaver settings. And it's set for no screensaver, but it will turn the screen off after a period of time. We don't really use screensavers as much as we used to, but if we wanted to, we could choose something like bubbles. I can't move the mouse down. And it gives you a little preview of what it would look like. And who doesn't love bubbles? Everybody loves bubbles. I love bubbles. 
But we'll cancel out of there for now without doing anything. You don't love bubbles as much as I do. Probably not. Under themes, we can go into theme settings. And again, this is outside of the settings. We can choose a theme. A theme is a combination of backgrounds, colors, and other effects. So if we wanted to, we could go and choose, for example, flowers. And that's going to override the rest of my settings. You'll see it's given me a new background. It's given me new color themes. And it's a slideshow, so this will change periodically to show different flowers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to the default theme. And notice that when I did, I've still lost my personalization. Now I do have this unsaved theme here where it kept it for me. If I go back to that, then I've got my same picture and I've got my same colors. One more area under personalization, if I go under Start, this controls what I see in my Start menu. So by default, it's showing the most used apps, that's on. Showing recently added apps, that's on. Start full screen. Now that's what Windows 8 did. When I clicked on the Start button in Windows 8.1, it would take the entire screen. People mostly didn't like that, so that's off by default. And then showing recently opened items in jump lists is turned on. I can also choose which folders appear on the Start menu. So, for example, File Explorer is on, Settings is on, Documents is not. And in older versions of Windows, we did see the My Documents or the Documents folder on there. So if you'd like to have that back, we can turn that on. And you can see similar things for downloads, music pictures, and so on. All right, so we've turned Documents on. Let's go look and see what that looks like. Click on Start. And now you can see I have a Documents item here that wasn't here before. Now, just to show what that full screen would look like, if I go back into Settings, and turn that start full screen on. Now instead of a start menu, I have a whole start screen. Everything else has gone away and all I see are the tiles. Close that down. I'm going to turn that back off. So this is some different ways you can control how Windows looks, colors mm -hmm. and themes and that sort of thing. The one other really important area to customize is your start menu. So okay. let's take a look at that. I'm going to close out of here and go back into our start menu. Now, notice over here, these icons, these apps, are the default ones that came with Windows 10, mm -hmm. in my case. I haven't customized this at all. And you can see that they're in two groups. There's a group called Life at a Glance, and there's a group called Play and Explore. Well, I probably want different groups. You know, maybe I've got some apps that are for my work and some apps that are for fun. Maybe I've got some apps for a certain project that I'm working on. Maybe some are for the kids. So I could call them different things. To change the name of one of these groups, notice that when I hover over it, there's a little two stacked line over here on the side. If I click on that, I get the chance to change that name. So maybe I want to call this Kids Games. Press Enter, and it's saved. Maybe I want this to show up first over on that side. If I click on the title, I can drag this entire group above Life at a Glance. Then I can drag life at a glance back over here. Clever. Now if I want to move just an individual program, I can grab one of these and move it and just drag it somewhere else. That's pretty easy. Maybe I want to make something bigger. So maybe this movies and TV I'd like to be bigger. I can right click, choose resize, and let's make it wide. That's what a wide tile looks like. Mm -hmm. There's also an option for a large tile. That's very large. Mm. And there's also an option for a small tile, which is very small. It was a cute little tile. Not every app has all the sizes. They don't all have small, they don't all have large, but they generally all have medium and wide. Now, notice something else I can do here too is besides resize, and I'm gonna put that back to wide. There's also an option to turn the live tile off. Now what do you reckon that does? Makes it disappear doesn't make it disappear. So notice that some of these tiles have stuff on them. Mm, so this one oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So money has some news information. Sports has some news information. News, as you might expect, has some news information. Also, this is the Cortana app, and it's got some news information rolling through it as well. I've got my calendar. I've got my mail. And all of these are showing me some updates of what's going on. Maybe that's bugging me. Maybe seeing those photos scrolling by is you know, more than I want to see, especially if you have 20 apps doing it at the same time. It right. can be a little hard to see. So I can turn that off. I can say, you know, I don't want to see the money stories. I'm going to turn that live tile off. And it goes back to being just a plain tile. That's great.
because I, I get overwhelmed with things it's, jumping at me. It's easy to get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So maybe I want to add more apps to this that aren't on here. Well, what I can do is I can go to all apps, find the app that I want. Maybe I want that calculator app. And there's two things I can do. One is I can drag it over here. Another, let's say that I want to put, uh, let's say that I want to put Excel over here. I can right click on the app and choose pin to start. And when I do, notice that by default it goes in a new group at the bottom down mm -hmm. here. Now if I do that for a few things, let's say I do that to um, get Skype and I do it for get Office and maybe I do it for Solitaire. Notice the start menu is getting pretty full. In fact, now I have to scroll up and down to see everything. Mm -hmm. So it's really up to you, but I would probably keep it small enough that you don't have to scroll up and down to see everything that's in there. This should be for your commonly used applications. Mm -hmm. And your most commonly used applications, you probably want to put in the task bar. Now, you mm -hmm. talked about that earlier. Yeah. So we've got our task view, our edge, our explorer, and our store down here. If I wanted to add something else, let's say I want to add the solitaire application, because I play a lot of solitaire. Do you know? Not really. Oh, okay. So I can right click on the application either here and choose pin to taskbar or I can do the same thing over here in the all apps screen and choose pin to taskbar. And when I do notice that icon's down there in the taskbar and it'll be available no matter where I am. So if I'm in the desktop, if I'm in another application, I can always get right to my solitaire. So Andy, that's how you customize Windows 10. And I look forward to customizing it for myself, and I like this a little better than Windows 8. I'm looking forward to working with Cortana. Um, She's looking forward to working with you, too. I know, and I'll call her a her instead of an it, <laughs> although it's kind of creepy. And um, customizing it, and uh, knowing that um, Edge is just just like Explorer Z, but still. I look forward to that, too. Great.